to episode five of the Flax Golden Knits podcast, a podcast about knitting, mostly. Um, my name is Kristen. I live in Nashville, Tennessee with my husband and our two kitty cats. And you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Flax Golden Knits. And I do hope you will say hi either in one of those two places or in the comments section down below, which does seem to be most people's method of, of saying hi, which I really appreciate. Um, and I do appreciate everyone who has um, commented on any of my uh, episodes so far. It is always so exciting to get the notification that somebody's commented and then to get to have a little, um, a little back and forth with somebody. I would like to say hi to all returning viewers. Hi, Barbara. <laughs> and, um, any, and all my subscribers, thank you so much. It's so exciting <laughs> to have subscribers. And uh, hi to anyone joining us for the first time. It is so nice of you to stop by and spend a little time with me. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Melissa of the High Fiber Podcast. That's H-I Fiber Podcast. And um, I had seen her podcast before and I really like her. I like her... Um, uh, embroidery too. She's just super cool. And so it was really cool to have a comment from her on my last podcast. And uh, I am going back and I didn't realize that she had done Vlogmas. So I am going back and watching all her Vlogmas <laughs> right now. Um, I'm about halfway through. She didn't do the whole um, like every single day, but they are fun to watch. And, um, and I am obsessed with Vlogmas. So it's kind of nice to have a Vlogmas that I hadn't seen yet. Anyway, um, let's get started because I do have a finished object today and lots of things to talk about. So I'm very excited to start the podcast with, look at these! My vanilla Valentine socks are in FO now. Finally, I have a finished object to show you guys. I'm so excited. <laughs> Um, so these are my Vanilla Valentine socks. Uh, I knit these out of Lane Servinia Forever in the colorway 67, which was a very van um, Valentine's-y colorway. Um, this is just a pretty vanilla sock. I used a size 0 um, 2 millimeter needle with uh, 64 stitches. I started with a Turkish cast on, which I love for a toe up sock. It's my very favorite. Um, and I start with 12 stitches on each needle, so 24 total, and then increase up to 64. Um, and I think that I did a, I think that I did a knit front and back on, um, on the toe to increase. Uh, I think that that's what I did. I honestly can't remember because I've been trying some different toes out lately. Um, I either did that or I did a yarn over every other row to increase. I I have no idea. Um, and then I did a fish lips kiss heel pulling from the inside of the ball of yarn so that I could keep the instep whole. And then I, uh, I never measure my... Um, my cuff really. I I don't do like a certain number of rows or a certain number of inches or anything. I just uh, kind of go until I feel like that's good. And that's what I did this time also. And then I cast off using a, um, I do not know the name of the bind off that I use, cast off, bind off, whatever it's called. Um, it's one that I learned on the very Pink Knits uh, podcast, or I guess her video tutorials, and I will link that down below in the show notes for you. Um, it's a great stretchy bind off, um, and it does look fairly neat. It's a not, uh, it's not the neatest ever. I don't know if you can, if that's too close, or if you can kind of see that. Um, it's not the neatest ever, but once you put it on and it kind of stretches, I mean, it's not bad, and I don't know. If anybody has a really great stretchy bind off that they really like, that is honestly stretchy, I mean, look at, this is like, you can't, 
that's why I like this because every other supposedly stretchy bind off that I've tried, damn it. So as I've said before, sometimes my camera will just randomly shut down because it overheats. It's a problem and I'm hoping to fix it soon. Um, but uh, yeah. So I think before my camera shut down, I was talking about the bind off on my um, Vanilla Valentine socks. And the bind off that I do is a very pink knits, uh, um, I learned it from a Very Pink Knits tutorial. I will link that below. It's the stretchiest bind off that I found uh, for, um, for toe up socks for the cuff and um, that looks the neatest, but it's still not the neatest, it's still not as neat as I'd like for it to be. So I think that I was saying if anybody, there we go, if anybody has a better option that they really like that leaves a very neat bind off on a toe up sock, I would love to hear about it. Um, I've tried uh, the surprisingly stretchy bind off. I can't, uh, I can't remember what that's called because I get the, is it the Judy's Magic cast on and Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. Anyway, I should look that up, but I'm not going to because I'm <laughs> I don't want my camera to shut down again because of overheating. So yay, vanilla Valentine socks. Do 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 do. I love them, and I can't wait to wear them. I don't know where to put all my stuff. I'm sitting in a different place today. So that was my finished object this week. I'm so excited to have one. And now I don't have any new cast-ons, but I will show you my works in progress and I do have some exciting things to, sh or one exciting thing to share there. Um, and I will go ahead and share that with you now. It's my Stay soft shawl. I've made great progress on it. I'm through the um, I'm through all of the striping now, and now I'm um, starting the the um, solid color. This is shipwreck. It's old rusted chair in the shipwreck colorway. This is um, Robin Sparkles by Woolen Boone. They're both sock yarns. This is an MCN base, the Woolen Boon, and this is just like the 80-20, I think, the, uh, the shipwreck in the Old Rusted Chair. I am so excited about how this is turning out. This is the Stay Soft Shawl, I didn't say yet, by Vera Valamaki. And um, yeah, I am super excited about it. I... Uh, if you haven't watched before, I've been through, this is my third attempt at finding the right colors, and I think that I finally got it. The third color will um, go along the bottom of the shawl, so once I finish, um, I finish growing the shawl in the shipwreck color, um, you pick up along the bottom there, and you knit in a third color. And the third color I found last week, and that's going to be also Old Rusted Chair in the bell bottom colorway. And yes, I am obsessed with this color. I cannot wait. I think that what was propelling me so much to get so much done was that um, I can't wait to cast, cast this one on, or I mean, add this one to this. So yeah. This is what that will, this will go along the bottom. And I'm so excited about it. This color just, yeah, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with this color. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, so I guess that's really all I have to say about that. Um, I am loving the way it's coming together and it's a garter stitch 
asymmetrical shawl. There's not, nothing really to say about it. I am kind of getting tired of just like the garter stitch asymmetrical thing, you know, like the, I don't know, it's just kind of I, getting a little bit boring, both, you know, just like knitting, knitting, knitting. But I will say, so I am taking a class. I started yesterday, which was Saturday. Today is Sunday, February 25th. Yes, Sunday, February 25th, 2018. And um, so I started a class yesterday. It's a basic coding class at Nashville Software School. Um, I'm taking it as sort of continuing ed for my job, which is communications at a small nonprofit. And um, I do, when you work at a nonprofit, or especially a small one, you do everything. So I'm like the social media manager and the, um, I do like the flyers and the posters and the interwebs. So um, I do have to work a lot with our internet, our, our, um, our website, and I know just a little bit of basic HTML, um, but almost just enough to be frustrated by how much I don't know. And so, yeah, I, I was offered some continuing ed through my job that they would pay for it. And so I found this coding class. It's just basic um, introduction to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript languages. And I really had a great time in yesterday, yesterday's class. You wouldn't think that spending five hours in a computer coding class on a Saturday morning when it was really pretty outside yesterday um, would be really exciting, but I had a great time. Everybody in my class was great, and I got a lot of knitting done. <laughs> um, so that was awesome. Uh, so long story, long, long way to say, um, that was one reason I got a lot done on this shawl, and another was I think I was being propelled because I really want to get the bell bottom uh, added because, yeah, because I am obsessed. So, moving along. <sighs> um, those are really the only two that I worked on this week. Fuzz. So much fuzz. Um, those are really the only two that I worked on this week because I um, really wanted to finish those socks so I could cast on some new ones. And, um, and I really wanted to get, you know, get some progress made on that shawl. Um, oh, this is, this was my point. Let's rewind just a little bit. Uh, okay, so this was my point. The garter stitch is getting a little boring, but it makes great class time knitting. Um, so I can really like be knitting along and making progress and also paying attention to what's actually going on, even though I don't know anything about like the computer coding. Um, and I've never really, uh, I've never taken a class since I've been a knitter, I haven't knitted in a class and I wasn't sure I wasn't sure how I would how it would go and I actually really loved it because it did kind of keep me awake and sort of my little fidgety mind occupied um, but but because it was just garter stitch I wasn't it wasn't occupying like whatever part of my brain had to pay attention to what was going on in class. So I really loved it and I'm really excited that it worked out for me. Um, I don't think that I could do anything with a pattern or, you know, anything with any counting or anything like that. Um, but yeah, just the garter stitch and, you know, you just increase on one side and decrease on the other side. And, you know, it's easy to keep, it's easy to keep track of without keeping track of it. Um, so yeah, that, uh, that was super, but I am really ready to cast on some things that require, that are going to be a little bit more interesting, a little bit more challenging, and, um, just, 
with some a little bit of interest. And I do have some of those, which I will talk about in just a minute. Um, so let me just quickly go through the other progress that I made. I did work a little bit on my Slable hat. This is a pattern by Wooly Wormhead. I'm knitting this out of Isayu Strick Alpaca 2 and in the old gold colorway another obsession and yeah I have to do about I think three and a half inches of one by one rib and um, that is the progress I've made I have about an inch and a half maybe <laughs> there um, so yeah I haven't really been working on this uh, with any regularity um, just when I get really tired of the garter stitch I kind of work on one by one ribbing a little bit for a while and um, that's it. So that's not really coming along, but it's it is what it is, and I'm not not really concerned about it. I know that uh, probably I know that I'll, I know that I'll make progress on it eventually, and it's not really going to be hat season again for a while. It's it's pretty warm in Nashville now, and. It got a little cooler. It was pr really warm last week, and then it uh, rained a lot last night, and it's a little bit cooler today, but I mean, I hardly even need a jacket, you know? Like, I feel like it never really got cold in Nashville this year. I know that a lot of people who live here would disagree with that, but um, that is my opinion. It didn't get cold enough to wear like a heavy sweater even, I don't think. Um, although I was sick for basically all of January, so I was really inside, and I think that's when it was cold, so maybe if I had been, you know, doing things outside, I would think differently. Anyway, whatever. Okay. So then the final thing that I worked on this week was um, my uh, Sockhead Slouch Hat by Kelly McClure. And I mean, I think that I put, I don't know, just a teeny tiny, like a handful of rows on it while I was editing the, pod the last week's podcast. Um, but nothing, nothing really to, to show, nothing exciting happened, and I, you know, I'm going to, right this second, I'm going to move my progress keeper, because I always forget to move my progress keepers, and then I cannot tell you where I was the last time I podcasted, and, um, so yeah, there we go, now I'll be able to tell you. And that's just, you know, I like to have that hat just to knit, um, just to have something really simple. I can just knit round and round, um, and I just change colors every single row, so I don't have to really keep up with anything. So I like to kind of keep this around, so, but I will say, when I was wearing this last week on the podcast, it's a little bit tight for what I would like it to be. Um, I think the pattern said to cast on 30, 138 stitches, which is the same as my Slable hat as well. And I think I took that down. And I, do, I think I cast on more like 120 something stitches. Um, and so it is a little bit, actually, it's not tight, but I think the, the beauty of having like a slouchy hat is that your hair doesn't get all messed up. Um, and it's tight enough that it would cause some serious hat hair if I were to wear it. So I'm thinking that I might go ahead and decrease this one, um, and finish it and give this to my friend's daughter because it's cute and I, I don't want to rip it and I have plenty I mean my gosh I have plenty of yarn to knit myself I 
to knit another one in the correct size. So I think that I might go ahead and do that. And then we'll have matching hats and that'll be fun and cute. Um, she is one of my favorite people in the world. She is adorable. Uh, okay, so that's all my works in progress. And now I'd like to talk about the things that I am dying to cast on. So I talked about, I talked about both of these before. Um, and I'll go ahead and talk about um, the sweater because I have an acquisition to go along with that. I have acquired some Mary and Jade Fiber Arts um, sock yarn in the vintage denim colorway. Oh, look at this. Oh my gosh. So I talked last week about wanting to cast on the um, Lorem Ipsum cardigan by, I cannot remember off the top of my head, but I will flash that on the screen and as well as a picture of the Lorem Ipsum so you can see the texture. It's a very um, simple textural cardigan. It's knit from the top down, raglan style, all in one piece. Um, you even knit the button band uh, uh, simultaneously. And I just wanted something fairly neutral but still interesting and beautiful to um, to knit this out of. And so uh, Mary and Jade Fiber Arts is one of my very favorite um, yarn companies. And she's on, let's see, here, I'll hold her card up. Emily is the dyer, and um, this is her card. And it's organic yarn, and she, she just, I just really love her colorways. She has great self-striping colorways and really, really pretty, um, like, speckled and variegated and tonal. Um, I, don't, I guess she doesn't have too many variegated, but more like the speckled and the tonal. And um, gosh, it's just so gorgeous. I think that's going to make a really beautiful, beautiful cardigan. And um, yeah, there's a little bit of purple in there, a little bit of uh, kind of that yellowy, rusty color that kind of like the um, the hardware and the the stitching on jeans have sometimes. And yeah, I just really love, love her stuff. So this is 80% uh, organic eco-processed merino and 20% nylon fingering weight sock yarn. Um, the skeins come in 425 yards each. And um, I think I need, I need less than that for the sweater. It's a short sleeve sweater. It's um, uh, no ease basically, or maybe like one inch of ease, but I think I'm gonna knit mine with actually no ease. Um, and yeah, she's a Canadian dyer and um, you can find her on Etsy and I will put her information in the show notes and also in, um, uh, fl I'll flash it on the screen as well. She is just so sweet. I love Emily. Um, I haven't talked to her, but I have uh, sort of messaged back and forth with her a little bit, and she's just the sweetest. I showed you, um, she's, her, uh, her yarn was actually, uh, I knit uh, the Love Potion, my birthday socks, which I think in my first episode I showed those. Um, I knit in her Love Potion colorway, which was just gorgeous with those little, it's pinky and peachy with the chartreuse uh, pops. And the last, um, when she sent me that, she sent me this little mini skein um, in a new colorway that she's might be releasing. And it didn't have a name, but I wanna knit one of those uh, Bluebird, Bluebirds of Happiness out of this. And I just, I, I love this. I just keep it on the top of my little yarn bowl because it makes me so happy to see it. Anyway, um, enough, uh, enough of that. <laughs> I feel like I'm just like um, 
fangirling over Mary and Jade Fiber Arts. Um, so I'm very excited to cast on that sweater. Uh, my goal was to wind those today, but today was my first day off in two weeks. Okay, my camera um, wisely cut me off from talking about <laughs> how my day went, uh, which was a good thing because I was just uh, talking about how I couldn't get anything done. Um, so I don't know why it shut off. It wasn't an overheating thing this time. Yeah, it just shut off randomly. Um, I really like this camera for taking pictures and it's not a bad video camera but it's not great for longer videos. It's great for short videos, vlogging. It's a Sony A5100 if anybody's interested. And um, so it's a mirrorless camera. It's one of the, um, the better, less expensive sort of entry level cameras, especially mirrorless. Um, and I think that it does a really great job. I just have the kit lens and it does um, a fantastic job, but yeah, like I said, the longer videos, uh, I think this is a problem with Sony's in general or maybe just the Sony mirrorless line, they overheat. And um, yeah, it's an issue and I am looking to looking to invest in a new camera soonish. I actually had the money set aside and then my car broke down, so, um, you know, that's life. Life, life is life. Uh, so, but it'll do for now, but that's, that's what happens, like, randomly, random shutoffs and overheating and whatnot. Um, anywho, uh, I was talking about the Lorem Ipsum, so, uh, and I was gushing over Mary and Jade Fiber Arts. I am really excited to get that sweater cast on, and, um, so yeah, I'm going to start swatching for that as soon as possible. It might not be tomorrow because I have a class again tomorrow night after work, so I'll probably just be working on the shawl in class tomorrow. Um, but yeah, very excited. Hopefully I'll at least have swatches done for next podcast. Um, anyways, and then I also am just dying to cast on the speckled space socks. The, spe the Speckled Space Socks is a pattern that I think probably everybody knows. It's free on Ravelry, and um, I think Amanda, Amanda somebody, I cannot remember, but I'll put that in the show notes, and I will put it in, um, I'll flash it on the screen. The Speckled Space Socks, I'm so excited to cast it on in the, the Force Awakens colorway by Lady Pearl Yarns. She is another Etsy dyer, and um, this is just gorgeous. I'm so excited about this yarn, and um, I can't wait to cast on the Speckled Space Socks. I had to wait because I really needed my size zero um, uh, circular needle, and I only have one of those, and that was being taken up by my, um, by my Vanilla Valentine socks. So now I can cast on the Speckled Space Socks as soon as I can. I will get to that. And I also really want to cast on another pair of um, just vanilla socks. Minnie Moo. Minnie Moo, what are you doing? Come here. You want to say hi? Come here, baby boy. We have a visitor. Look at him. Minnie Moo, say hi. He doesn't like the camera, really. Oh. He's purring. Both of our cats are really quiet purrs. You, you can't really hear our cats purr unless you're right up next to them. But, oh. But it's still sweet. I have lip gloss on, so I'm not gonna kiss you, Moo. And there he goes. Okay, I need to hurry up and finish this podcast because my camera just overheated and shut down again. 
And so I've let it cool down and hopefully I can make it um, through this. And I also have only like 20% left on my camera battery. And <laughs> It's just a little bit of a disaster today. Some some days the camera does better than others. Anyway, this is not a camera complaining podcast. So uh, moving on. Or, so I think that when it shut off, I was talking about wanting to cast on some more some more vanilla socks. And I have been ever since I figured out the two at a time toe up socks and the fish lips kiss heel, I've been knitting all of my socks that way. And I really, really love two at a time, but I do miss the, um, the DPNs are, I think maybe a little faster. I'm not, sh I'm not sure, but, um, I miss being able to kind of like knit around and around like that. Uh, so I'm thinking of maybe doing some one at a time cuff down socks vanilla and trying out the fish lips kiss heel um, going cuff down. I've not done that yet. Um, so I'd really like to get some of those cast on. I do not have a large stash. And so I don't have a lot of yarns to choose from for um, vanilla socks. I do have a few that I am thinking about for this, and I'm going to show you those because having a hard time deciding. Um, I have another couple of skeins of the Lane Cervinia Forever in the um, 72 colorway, which is a very springy um, I, I springy colorway so it might be might be perfect for like a March pair of socks uh, you know as we go into spring um, but I'm not quite ready for spring so I'm not sure if I really want to cast these on so we'll see we'll see I got this yarn when I was in Chicago for Thanksgiving and um, yeah so I has some good memories I also got this yarn when I was in Chicago for Thanksgiving and um i have lost the i've lost the uh the tag for it already so i have no idea who made this yarn i had no clue um i must have the tag someplace but i do remember that it was the lux purple rain colorway and i know that it was a um it was a yarn dyer that was a Midwestern yarn dyer, so um, from somewhere near-ish the Chicago area. Um, but it is just gorgeous, and I've really wanted to make my husband a pair of socks out of this. So I'm thinking uh, maybe, maybe this. Uh, and then I do have the uh, BFL or uh, the Stranded Dye Works industrial king fisher on her bfl base the fjord base and i can't stop thinking about this colorway it's just so pretty but i really i don't know um i don't know if i would want to do like maybe even a uh, contrast heel with it or but part of me really wants to um because this is such a light and kind of subtle colorway um Part of me wants to knit a patterned uh, sock out of this, so I'm not sure, not sure. Um, I'm not sure how I'm leaning, I really don't know. Uh, but I am excited to do that. That will probably not get cast on this week. My priority is swatching the sweater and getting the speckled space socks cast on. Um, so the vanilla socks will probably have to wait a little bit longer. Um, so yeah, I think that's all of my knitting, and then I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, fiber festivals and knitting events. So I said maybe in my first or second podcast that, um, one of my knitting goals for this year is to attend some knitting events, some fiber festivals, or, um, I really thought SSK was going to be my event because... It happens in Nashville, and I live in Nashville. Easy, right? Except that um, because I've never been to any of these, I had no idea like how early you have to get your um, 
tickets or whatever. So I started looking around online um, to find out about SSK 2018, which happens in, it's a super summer knit along. So it happens in July and um, found out that I needed, I would have needed to decide and get tickets back in December if I wanted to go to that. So, um, or November or something crazy like that. Um, and it's, I think like $675 if you do the full package where you come in from out of town and stay, um, uh, stay at, do the hotel package where they provide the hotel and the dinner and all of that. Um, I would be doing in town because I live here and that would still be $400 and that gets you one class, like a goodie bag and some other, uh, some other fun things. Um, so, but, um, since I didn't get my tickets, I still can go to the market on, I think the Sunday and, um, I just, it, it will have been picked over a bit by the, um, the attendees that did get tickets that are attending the full, full weekend. And so, um, it's $5 at the door and... So I don't know how that goes. If anybody knows, please let me know um, because, I mean, do I need to get there really early and stand in line to make sure I can get in? Like, what is the deal with um, the vendor markets if you aren't an attendee? I mean, is it going to be completely picked over? Is it going to even be worth going? I just don't know, but I kind of just want to go and at least check it out. Um, and then I, I'm glad that I found out this early that I need to, to um, maybe save and get myself in prepared to um, get my tickets early next or uh, at the end of this year uh, for 2019. Um, so a little bit bummed about that, wah, wah. Um, but such as life. And there are still some fiber festivals in my area that I am looking to go to. One is, uh, uh, hang on, I pulled these up. So I pulled these up earlier so I could talk somewhat intelligently about them. One of them is in Murfreesboro, which is just about a 45 minute drive south of Nashville. Um, And it's just a one day fiber festival. It's a uh, fiber in the borough or yeah, fiber in the borough. And that happens November 3rd this year. So I will definitely be doing that if I can at all help it. Um, and then, and that's just, that's a fiber festival. There are some classes and it's, um, you know, fiber. So, you know, sheep and alpaca and all of the, the fibery things, um, the animals and the, the spinning and all of that. So I don't know, I might get my first spindle there and, um, like a drop spindle or something who knows. And then there's also actually the weekend before that, there's the Southeastern, um, fiber fair or Southeastern animal fiber fair um in Asheville, North Carolina and I love Asheville. So I'm really considering going to that as well. Um and making, you know, going ahead and making plans to attend. That's October 26th through 28th this year in Asheville, North Carolina. So those are two that I am really um looking forward to and planning on and uh so yeah, and then SSK I will have to just plan for next year. Um, yeah, so there, there, uh, there is one more thing that I'd really like to talk to you about. It's something that I've been meaning to talk to you about for a while. And, um, and I actually meant to go over it in my first podcast and, you know, like I was just so overwhelmed by just like doing the podcast that I just kind of forgot. So in my first podcast, I showed you a sweater that I had just finished, and that was my um, the Beckett pullover by Marie Green of um, Olive Knits. And 
I do love this sweater. I get lots of compliments on it. And it is knit out of kind of a, um, a an unusual yarn. And that is the um, Galesk wool cotton yarn. Um, they put a sticker right over the, you can't see the logo. I don't like that, but, um, but it's the Galesk, it's a Danish yarn, but the, uh, I think the wool, the wool and cotton originate in Australia and Turkey. Um, but I'll put the Galesk uh, yarn company information in the show notes. Um, you should definitely go and check her out. She is um, the the originator of these yarns. She's very interesting. She has a very interesting bio and um, I just really wanted to go over uh, my experience of working with this yarn because it is such a different yarn. You don't see a lot of... Um, so this is... Um, it's a fingering weight. They come in 50 gram balls and uh, it's 55% wool, 45% cotton, and you don't see that a lot. Um, and uh, so I wanted to talk about it. It was very different to work with, and it has been different to wear. It has a, just a different texture and consistency. Um, this is all I have left, and um, yeah, it almost feels like what is that? It just has such a different texture. So it doesn't, it's not sproingy. It's not like a sproingy wool, um, worsted wool yarn. It's um, definitely cotton, but it's soft. It has like a softness of wool. Um, but yeah, so so the, the stitches are a little bit unforgiving if you are uh, like if you have any kind of tensioning issues while you're knitting because the the cotton it just doesn't have that sproingy the sproinginess um, and but it's a very very light it's a very light feeling you know sweater and um, so it's not it has a coolness to it when you're wearing it um, which is, I guess, from the cotton, it has just a like a nice light coolness. Um, yeah, and it loses its shape uh, quite quickly, kind of like the cotton, um, the cotton in there. But it has a very, very interesting texture. I like it a lot. Um, the this this sweater when I washed it to block, it lost a lot of color. Um, I will actually pop a picture on the screen for you to see the water after the wash because I've never seen anything lose this much, um, shed this much dye, or, I mean, I've never seen the water be that color, like, full of dye when I've washed things. And I did use soak, and I have heard recently that sometimes, we, sometimes soak, something to do with the pH that, um... Like, it can make yarn bleed like that. There's a term for it, and I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Um, but I did want to share that experience. I don't know if it was the wool. And, I mean, it doesn't bother me. I just have to remember to only wash this sweater kind of by itself. Um, and maybe I'll try a different soap and see if that ha makes a difference. Um... But I haven't, I mean, I've used that soak before and I haven't noticed that much shedding of dye. Um, anyway, it was just a point of interest. But I really, the, the yarn is very soft, very soft. It's, I didn't find it hard on my hands, but like I said, it was, it's a bit unforgiving. Like the stitches sort of keep a little bit of, a, of an unevenness to them, even after it's been washed and blocked. Um, which doesn't bother me really and actually just gives a different texture to the um, to the sweater but but you know if it what does bother you it it is a little bit uneven I will say that um, I I guess maybe it's not merino wool for sure it's lambs wool it says on the um, website and I you know I don't know what breed or anything but 
um, it hasn't pilled. I mean, I've worn this several times all day and I mean, it hasn't pilled at all anywhere. Not under the armpits, nowhere. Um, so that is a plus for this yarn as well. Anyway, um, I think that Fiber, uh, uh, Fiber Tales podcast is having a Danish yarn knit along, so I wanted to give a little bit of a review of that yarn. It's the Gaelsk Bommold Og Old. I will link down below. Um, I don't know how to pronounce any of these things, so, but it's uh, Gaelsk is the name of the dyer. Well, Gael? Gael? I have no idea. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a pronunciation whiz. Um, I'll link it all below and go read her bio because I, I just, I really like her. She's, uh, she's interesting, um, in a good way. I feel like sometimes people use the word interesting in a passive aggressive, like weird way, but she's really like interesting in a really cool way. Okay. So I think that that is it. Um, because I am in this class, um, this computer coding class two nights a week and then Saturday mornings for the next three weeks. And then I do have some at home study to do. I think that what I'm going to do instead of doing like a weekly podcast where I sit and just talk to you guys, I think I might do more of a, um, a vlog, um, each week where just like as the mood strikes or as I'm able to, I just kind of like pick up the camera and talk about what's going on with my knitting. So, um, because rounding everything up and like sitting and doing this whole thing, it takes some time. Um, so it might be easier to just like for the next couple of weeks to do more of a vlog format. Um, so yeah, we'll just try that out and see how that goes. And until then, I will let you move along um, before my camera shuts down. I have 3% um, and I should probably get to bed because I have work tomorrow and then class tomorrow night and uh, yeah. Um, so I will, I will say good night. Um, thank you so much for watching, for spending some time with me. I have absolutely loved doing this podcast so far. This is my fifth episode and, um, yeah, I'm just having a lot of fun doing all of the, like the recording and the videoing or, um, the recording and the editing, the video editing. Um, it's been really interesting, um, to dip my toe into that and and, and actually hearing from people and um, getting to know some people that has been, well, not really getting to know, I don't really know anybody from a couple of comments, but um, it's been fun to get the comments. And also, like, like I've said before, I don't have a lot of fibery friends. And so I don't get to chatter about my knitting a lot and it has been really cathartic actually and really nice to just be able to sit and blather on about my knitting. So thank you for watching and um, yeah, uh, I have 1% now so I'm going to say goodbye, wrap it up. Again, my name is Kristen and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Flax Golden Knits. Please say hi in the comment section below or in one of those places. I'm open to suggestions if there's anything you'd like to hear or see in particular. And um, yeah, uh, I don't have a Ravelry group yet because yeah, I don't know that there, there are enough people <laughs> for a Ravelry group if, there, if there's enough need for one. Um, anyway, I'm just rambling nervously.